You're listening to the smartest guys in marketing, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, conversions, and marketing coolness. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. What's up, everybody? Chris Evans, Taylor Wells, Traffic and Funnels, the best podcast in the no, world. Known to mankind up to this point. Up to this point. What are we talking about in this mini episode? Hold on, hold on. I got to put in my cool little uh, time tracker, I got to put podcast in here. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Here we go. Sorry, I'm good. Guys. Sorry we're All right. the time over there. Yeah. So this is a mini episode, obviously, unscripted, unrehearsed. 30 second episode. We're like halfway mm. over. <laughs> Should get some value. All right. So here's what we're talking about today. It's very, very controversial, but we are right. We're on the right side of history on this one. Cash versus credit. Mm. And in fact, I wanted to record a video about this, but the podcast will have to do for now. We'll come back to that. And I was going to title this wealthy money versus poor money. Because really the whole cash versus credit thing is really a reflection of how it's a reflection of the differences between how the wealthy think about money versus how the poor think about money. Cash and credit, they're both money. Mm-hmm. both forms of, of wealth, but how you use that and the way you feel about that determines your ability to make proper investments into success. So we do this all the time. We, we talk to people who are like, oh man, I've been stuck at a certain level and I just don't have the, the cash to invest into X, Y, Z. And uh, we'll talk to them about credit and this people are like culturally hardwired to despise credit. They think it's a bad thing, but when you dig into the businesses that are larger and they're actually doing some amazing things, you know, like we we use credit all the time. Most of our advertising expense is put onto credit. Why is that? Yeah, well, there's multiple, but we can cash flow, right? We're leveraging someone else's money to cash flow, and it's interest free. Obviously, we don't just stack up debt; that would be stupid. But we can leverage City or Chase or whoever's money for our own benefit. Yeah, exactly. So we get people who will come in and they'll put something on an MX or they'll put something. And um, this has become affectionately known. I think the first time I actually heard about this was from a guy named Dan Meredith who talked about the Amex challenge. Have you heard of this? No. Yeah. So basically you go out and you make a bunch of investments and you put it on, on an Amex and you set a challenge for yourself to pay all of that off in 30 days. Now mm-hmm. you could die from this, basically. It's not necessarily Disclaimer. Safe. The safest way. But my very first coach, I remember I put it on an American Express, not because, well, actually it was because I didn't have the money, but that's beside the point. I believed that he had (laughs) what it took to help me. And more than anything, I believed in myself to be able to actually turn this into a positive experience and a positive ROI. And when people come down, when you get down to the root of it, when people are like, no, 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 I can't invest. I can't do credit. I have to have the cash. I have to save up the whole thing up front. It really reveals an inability to bet on themselves. They don't necessarily yeah. trust in themselves. They feel like that they don't have what it takes to discipline themselves through the process. And that's why they're afraid of it. Well, not only are they deficient in cash, but they're deficient in confidence. That was really good, bro. <sighs> Oh my gosh, I just want to drop my microphone right now. Chris is taking his shirt off. You can't see this, but he's taking his shirt off right now. (laughs) I'm about to run around naked. (laughs) Naked. (laughs) But it's true though, right? Like we have no problem dropping 25 grand or 50 grand or whatever, because we are confident in our ability to recoup that investment. And if it were worst case scenario, and for some reason that didn't happen, whether the service provider we might've hired totally sucked and blew it. Like we're okay with that. Yeah. I think that the model that you have to have is you have to actually look at what are the consequences? It's twofold. This is how we make decisions as well in our business. What are the consequences of not being able to move forward in this particular area? And you kind of get, get agreed on that. And then also what are the, what's the likelihood of me being able to make this money back in the next 12 months? Mm Mm-hmm. And if you have a decent likelihood of making it back in the next 12 months, then really, I would recommend that the investment be made on credit anyways, because you're going to be able to monetize that and it's not utilizing or cutting into your own cash flow. People have this romanticism about being able to pay for things 
in cash. Remember one time I was having lunch with a group of friends and we had started getting a measure of success. It was about a year and a half ago. I think I told you about this, Chris. And uh, I was bragging because we just bought a, um, a new mattress. It was like four grand. And dude, this is the freaking the most amazing mattress ever. So dude, I can, I can sleep. <laughs> no, it's not a water bed. Dude, I can sleep like 20 hours in this mattress. Anyways, <laughs> we put it all on credit because it was interest free. I remember someone was like, why would you, you shouldn't have put that on credit. Like if you have the money, you, why, you should just pay for it in cash. I remember thinking like, you are so dumb. Like you're literally so stupid. That's why you're poor. I didn't say that. But honestly, like if you're able to make an investment and it not cut into your own cash flow, then there's nothing romantic about paying for it in cash up front. That's not a romantic idea. Neither is buying cars in cash or buying homes in cash. And I'm trying to explain this to our mortgage person right now because she's trying to get us to pay like a gazillion dollars up front for a house. And I'm trying to explain to her, like there is a cost to me pulling this out of our bank account because of the ROI that's coming out of it. I'd rather use credit. I'll use credit all day long. Yeah. And I think too, like just to bolt on, you know, some wisdom for the guys who might be like, go take this to the extreme is you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself on this either. Like you don't want to be stupid too. And you have to prioritize and have your focus. So whether you are investing into one mentor before you you go out and invest in three or four others, right? You want to make sure that your output is being kept up by your action and your results. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a good point. So like your example, when you invest in that coach, you invested six grand, do it on the Amex. You didn't have that money. At that point, you're making like $1,200 a month and eating ramen noodles. And then within 30 days, you'd gone out and made that money back. Not all of it, but the first payment. So you were close. Like you were keeping in pace with your investment, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. And you were building your confidence at the same time. And then so when the next opportunity came to invest and leverage credit, you had the confidence and you had the track record. Yeah. And I, you know, I had learned that habit of backing myself into a corner where if I was going to make an investment, my skin was in the game to where I can, I'd backed myself into being, having to take action. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem with a lot of these information products and things out there today. It's like, you know, like $4 and a book is $10 and you've got these people who just buy everything and they'll never implement them. And that's a problem. It's that's very comfortable. To do. It's comfortable. Yeah. Working with us is not. Well, working with me is, but Chris is mean. I'm extremely mean. So, yeah. you know, it's just having that, that abundance mindset versus poverty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So cash versus credit. Always use the credit. Stack up as much debt as you can. <laughs> <laughs> and then disappear. We need to get a disclaimer on this page somewhere. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. But yeah, it is. it just reflects more than anything two different ways of looking at an ROI. And yep. that's important. So, And if you lack the confidence to leverage the credit, there's probably a deeper issue going on with you mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we need to talk about next time. Next time. On the All right, y'all. Right. Cool. Peace. Later. All right. See ya. This is the podcastfactory.com.